uh, welcome back to Act So Weird. Um, I just uh, wanted to give a big shout out to my coffee buddies, Tiffany, Barbara, and William. I love you guys. You're amazing. Okay, now, uh, it's 39 degrees outside. Like I said, it's been really cold in this area. So, um, today I thought I would just tell you a story that I found out that I think is kind of weird. Well, it's not really weird. It's really amazing, but it's just weird how things come about. You know what I mean? Anyway, and I really hope my phone don't ring and cut us off. You know what I mean? But it, I'm going to try to feed it all in. Okay. Um, Johnny Gurella, and I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, it's spelled G-R-U-E-L-L-A. Anyway, at this time, when he was younger and lived at home with his family, his mother had made a doll out of just rags. No face, nothing. Just made it into like the form of a person for his sister. Years down the road, they all move out. You know, the mother stays there as life progresses. You know how that goes. Anyway, uh, he ends up later down the road bringing his wife and daughter back he moves into that home and while he's outside working his daughter is playing in the attic and she finds that doll it's no face or nothing like i said she runs out to her dad and said look what i found can i have this and him remembering the doll and who made the doll and his mother had passed away while well, he thought that was sweet you know what i'm saying so Anyway, he, um, he drawed the face, see the face, and told her, he's like, take it in there and show it to your mom. So, she takes the doll, runs back in the house to show her mom, and her mom's sitting there making quilts, working on quilts. Her mom got tickled when she saw that the dad had drawn the face on those rags. So, what she done was in her little... Uh, rag bin, you know, right here where she's making quilts. She took the rags out and made the dress out of rags. It was in the rag box, okay? And she also took yarn and made her hair. So she takes this and runs back out to her dad, all excited. So what he done, he took a piece of hard candy he had in his pocket and Stuck it down inside the rag. Keep in mind, this was just right. It wasn't this nice. It was just rags. And he stuck a piece of hard candy down in there. And he'll say it. He said, this will be her heart. So, um, nowadays, if you do happen to find a raggedy Ann doll. And I'm not going to fool with taking off her clothes off to show you. But right in here on her skin is heart. There's a heart drawed right here. And it says, I love you. I'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, um, he started using this doll to have father-daughter time, you know, and the mother was right there with him. But he would make stories up with this little doll, like at little adventures and stuff. And uh, during this time, his wife was pregnant. Well, she ends up having a boy. So the mother made a boy doll like this one and she named it andy this one she named raggedy ann that's where you get raggedy ann and andy their brother and sister she made the boy doll for the son and the mom and dad made the girl doll for the girl well uh the father was a publisher and you got to keep in mind this is back in the 20s Okay, um, he started, he got a patent for this doll because where he was uh, telling her these stories and stuff, he would write them down on paper. Well, he's a publisher, so he published them into books. And well, his patent got approved by the time his daughter was eight. Now, this is during the time when they didn't know nothing about vaccines or antibiotics and alcohol for that matter okay anyway they um gave her his daughter a vaccination it 
because everybody was getting real bad sick and kids was dying and stuff. So they just go up to a kid back then. They didn't need a parent's permission. They just go up and shoot them in the arm, you know. You know what I'm saying. Uh, back then, I guess they didn't have to have permission. If your kid was stepping down the line, they just walk up, smack him upside the head. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, she ended up dying from that shot. She got a, a real bad infection because, like I said, they didn't know nothing about alcohol and sterilization and all that stuff. So she ended up dying. He was devastated because he, the books and everything just got um, patented and it was start, and he had published those stories. So it was becoming famous. So him and his wife, where they shared the love of their daughter with this little doll and made the girl doll and the Andy doll, which I don't have and I would love to get my hands on one, but they're very hard to find, the Andy doll. But anyway, you, uh, the stories are about these two little characters going on adventures and stuff, and they teach you a lesson, you know how they do in cartoons. Anyway, they wanted their daughter's life to be, um, to represent something, to mean something. You know what I'm saying? So, um, he used this little doll for, uh, to stand up for posters and all this stuff against having your children vaccinated without a parent's consent. So, this little girl is actually tied, this little doll is actually tied to death. And I know everybody has seen the Annabelle doll that's possessed by a demon and all that crap. I'll put a link for that, too, in the description if I can. And it explains all about the Annabelle doll. The Annabelle doll uh, was from the um, Conjuring movie. And they made the doll that you see in that movie is not the real Annabelle. The real Annabelle is about a two foot wrecked in. And Ed and Lorraine Warren put it in a case and uh, you're not supposed to be able to let, nobody's supposed to let it out. It's very dangerous. And uh, that's what you call a haunted object or whatever. But I just thought it was so weird because my grandmother like I said, she gave me this doll. Not this one, but one like this one. I won't even get the one she got me out because it makes me nervous. But I don't want nothing to happen to it. It means that much to me. Which I'm eventually going to give to my grandbaby, Annie. Uh, anyway, this. Um, I have been looking at this little girl my whole entire life. Because my grandmother got me that doll. And, I, you know, I've seen her forever. I'm 52 years old and just learned the story of this little doll. At first, I thought it was just a cartoon. You know how they do cartoons and then they make characters and then kids go by the characters, you know. I thought that's about all it was. But I was that's not the case. She actually stands for family, love. You can you can take this off and it'll say I, it says I love you. The reason they put the hearts on here now is because back in the twenties they actually put hard candy in one piece of hard candy in each doll because they produced these dolls and it got famous. But the little kids, some little kids, was choking from the hard candy. So they decided to take the candy out of the dolls and they just stamped a heart right here. So you see, that's what it represents. And it says, I love you. Is that not the sweetest story? Anyway, guys, I'm going to get off here and I really hope you enjoyed this story. Um, it's, it's really cold out here, but thanks to my girls. I love you guys so much, I'm telling you. Anyway, 
I really hope you have a good time over the weekend. Today's Saturday. And um, even if it's gloomy, it's gloomy. There's not much sunshine. It's cloudy or whatever. You can always um, look up the story on Rack Den for yourself. It tells all about it. I'm going to try to include in this video the poster sign. See, let me tell you this. There is so there was so many people over the years that tried to take this doll and make it like that she went uh that she died because of the doll. No. And some people tried to say that um he made this doll uh because she died. No, and that's wrong too, because he had made the doll way before she died. See how people do? They'll take something so sweet and turn it around to make it mean. That's the way it is on this planet. You know, these people. People can take something so sweet and make it so bad. I don't understand why people would do that. To me, that's just weird. You know? You, it, you got to look at life on the good, on the positive side. If you're constantly looking at the bad, that's all you're going to see. Well, anyway, I'm out here. I'm only looking for the good. Stay cool. And uh, I love you guys. And I'll see you next time. Okay? Peace.